Welcome to the Second Drafts Podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. I'm EJ. And today on Second Drafts, we'll be talking about the pros and cons of different publishing options. Awesome. So uh, today we'll be basically going over just a few of them. There are a couple other different ways that it can be done, but I'd say the main three would be uh, legacy publishing, like the original um you basically get picked up by a publisher and they put out your book and marketed that sort of thing and mm-hmm. then there's self-publishing uh which we are doing currently and mm-hmm. that's obviously putting your book out on your own and you kind of handle everything there and then there's also the uh, vanity publishing which uh, we can of course get into a little bit later there That'll be our last one. We have talked about it before, but uh, we'll just give an overview of that again a little bit later on what that is. Uh, but with the way technology is these days, there's, of course, lots of different options on how to get your work out there. And uh, the biggest question, of course, is which way should you kind of focus on? Or uh, if... You know, you want to do multiple different ways. Which ones are the best, like the pros and the cons, that sort of thing. So that's what we'll be talking about today. So, uh, Ethan, why don't you uh, get us started there on the legacy publishing? Okay, yeah. Um, first one, first up, is, uh, you know, the what they call traditional publishing. Uh, um, I don't think they like the name very much, uh, being called legacy. It, uh, <laughs> it, it comes from... from my side of the world, actually, uh, IT side of things, legacy systems are the, the old way of doing things. <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, that, that part of the system that you just drag along because you don't want to lose compatibility with the old stuff. But, you know, uh, it's become kind of a, a buzzword for it, so that's fine. Windows 98 um, is still good. Oh, wow. <laughs> Windows 98. That's like a, a horse-drawn buggy in terms of software. <laughs> you can still run all the advanced games and graphics on that, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. If, <laughs> if you really want to, you sh- you're, you're, you know, welcome to give it a try, but uh, don't expect any support from Microsoft. <laughs> We're not um, trying to give a metaphor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is real. Okay, so first up... Um, with traditional publishing, you've, you've, you've got a couple of pros. Look, there's, there's not one of these things that are just all bad. So there's definitely some some advantages to doing it this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, first up is, uh, of course, uh, money. We um, the the way a traditional publishing works tends to give you upfront cash for your book, for your idea. They kind of buy the idea from you for an advance, mm-hmm. and um, so that's that's nice, you know, for writers that need to make a living, uh, it's good to have that uh, inflow of cash in kind of a lump sum. Some authors need that to survive. Um, the rest of the uh, payment for the book, of course, gets gets done via royalties, and um, a lot has been said about royalty rates being really low, like. 17% or thereabouts yeah. when you look at it effectively. Um, and that's that's been a problem for people, but the advance is certainly nice. If, if you have a killer idea and you manage to sell that to a publishing house, you can get a nice lump sum from that. Um, and I'm sure the bigger that you uh, get, of course, the bigger that advance would get in the end. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, <laughs> first-time authors, I mean, you're looking at something like $5,000. It's really not a lot. But once you get going and you're a, you've got a proven track record with the publisher, you can, you know, that, that amount really starts jumping. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the era of, of, say, Stephen King that got, what was it, $400,000 for his very first book, I think that <laughs> era is, has, is long gone. Jeez. That's not going to happen today on your first book. He was quite exceptional in that regard. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, okay, so next up is the fact, you know, we're still on the pros, of course. <laughs> there's, <laughs> luckily, there's more than one. Um, okay, a lot of the work gets done for you when you go the legacy publishing route 
of course, that's that's kind of the reason why you only get 17% royalties. Of course, they're doing your editing, they're doing your marketing, mm -hmm. formatting, distribution. There's a lot of uh, things that the typical publisher will do for you that you don't have to worry about, which is nice. It leaves you to be the writer and to some extent do some uh, marketing as well, as much as you prefer. Yeah, but, and actually, yeah. uh, with you mentioning that about the royalty rate there, uh, I didn't think of it there. This isn't in our cons list, unfortunately, but I just thought of it now. Uh, mm -hmm. On that side of things, uh, instead of it being that lump sum, like you pay for editing and sometimes like that and uh, certain types of marketing, uh, where it's taken as almost a royalty, uh, you're you're almost paying for that over a long term and if your book does really well then like mm -hmm. that's kind of almost lost revenue there like mm -hmm. for some of it i i believe just in terms of editing because you you'd only put your uh, book through a couple rounds of editing say and then you know it's paying royalties for so many more years than that for the publishing house yeah definitely but you're jumping the gun now <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're not in the cons yet yeah uh <laughs> Okay. I no, just want to get that editor good. before that's, I forget. Oh, <laughs> definitely. No, that's something to think about. We'll definitely mention that when we get there. <laughs> okay. So to do with this one, the next thing is you, you tend to get more exposure, of course, because the, 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 the publishing houses have a lot of reach. They've got a lot of punch that they pack, uh, when it comes to marketing, getting you into bookstores, getting you, um, you know, all over the place. They can get you on the daily show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on USA Today, depending on what kind of book you're writing. Uh, a lot of places, a lot of, uh, opportunities, I would say, uh, that you, that you're getting with a traditional publisher. You know, you can't dispute that. Um, even though it must also be said that this, this isn't always the case. It, it doesn't mean that just because now you've gotten a publishing contract with a publisher, uh, you're not necessarily one of their golden children. You know, yeah. it might be that you're doing well enough to get all these awesome things, these bonuses, exposure and all that, but it might also be that you're in the middle list, which means, well, <laughs> you, you'll be around there. You, you can say you've got a publishing contract, but uh, just be aware that you might not be getting all these things necessarily. Yeah, um, but even just uh, in general, like uh, to further that point there, They've mm -hmm. been in it for years, so they have all the contacts. They, yeah, they've definitely. done all of the uh, uh, networking, as it were, there to be able to use those effectively. Whereas, uh, just in in general, for on your own, you wouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. You would have to work yeah, definitely. on it on your own. They've got a huge support system that 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 can really help you if you take advantage of that, which is, uh, you know, that's, that's great. That is definitely a, a pro to it all. Mm -hmm. uh, and and with all this, you know, with all these other people, the contacts that you have available to use, uh, you know, if you do it right, it can be a lot less stressful to, to uh, publish this way because a lot of this stuff is handled by the people. You know, you get to delegate and the publisher kind of does a lot of it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to hope that they do it yeah. well, <laughs> which yeah. isn't always the case. But, you know, generally I think you can, um, you know, it, it does help. And then another thing I wanted to mention that I uh, just thought of actually is uh, some people prefer the kind of validation. This is this is obviously a less concrete advantage, but there's a, there's a certain kind of validation for many people still. Uh, linked to traditional publishing, they mm -hmm. they like the idea of being able to say, you know, somebody approved of my work, some professional out there thought my work's good enough to to bet money on and to publish, which, you know, to many people it doesn't mean much. <laughs> if you listen to the the demagogues in the indie movement, you know, they they don't much believe in this and they don't want it, and that's fine. But for some people, it, it doesn't help denying it. For some people, this is still important. So getting published with a big publishing house can give you a big boost of validation. Yeah, I'd say that there's like there's really no denying that there is still a stigma attached to self-publishing. Mm. And Definitely. 
uh, being labeled, as it were, as a self-published author, um, it has that certain type of connotation. And, you know, you might not want to acknowledge mm -hmm. it, of course, but it's still there for a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. We're getting there, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes some time, yeah. unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, I think we're making great strides. And, yeah, that's about it for the pros. I'm not sure I can think of any more off the top of my head. Yeah, unfortunately, me either. Uh, just <laughs> as a note there, audience, like, uh, this is our own list. If you uh, have other ones there, other pros and cons that you've thought of, certainly uh, tell us in the comments. Of course. So, uh, yeah, let's get into the cons there of the uh, legacy traditional publishing side of things. Yeah. Because there are a few there with that as well. <laughs> uh, Definitely. Tell us about it. Yeah. One of the first things uh, is you lose your rights to the, the book there. So generally in the contracts, the publishing house will have the rights for uh, almost everything for a certain period of years. And sometimes, depending on all that legal, legal issues that might uh, go on there, even if the book doesn't sell very well, it might be like really hard to get those rights back so that you can do what you want with them afterwards. Mm. Yeah, there's been several horror stories about uh, people wanting to get their rights back and having such a hard time of it, uh, especially because the, the legacy contracts sometimes uh, use the term, you know, as long as your book is in print, they retain the rights to it mm. but of course in the ebook in the, in the in the digital book world your book will never be out of print because it can be on kindle permanently yeah <laughs> and if that counts as in print then that means you will never according to your contract get out of it it's you know they own the, that book forever you may as well kiss it goodbye yeah just as an aside to that on the side of contracts contracts just they suck. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the way the legacy industry does it, I think that's what really sucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they're kind of. It, it is a little bit. They're almost stuck in their own ways. Like this isn't something, of course, that we really have much knowledge on. But just even doing research on it, like they mm. like doing things their way and like pricing things their own way, and trying to work within that and trying to work with them. It's kind of you're almost put against a wall. Like they won't really, uh, they won't really pay attention to any suggestions that you might want to give. And uh, mm -hmm. just another one of the things there, um, it also takes a long time sometimes to get published. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes even up to like a year and a half to yeah. get it published for some reason. Like it, I, I couldn't even find out really uh, any good reason why there was that wait. Maybe there's some marketing going on there, but I mean, uh, if we look at movies and stuff like that, they don't usually put the trailer out until like six months uh, before the movie is out. Like they mm -hmm. want to have it really close to when it's out there just to keep that in everyone's mind. So it can really hurt sales. Um, I would think <laughs> In that yeah, regard. that's that's a bit of the problem with this uh, big publishing house machine. Is it's a it's a huge, big machine that that can be very effective in certain cases, like with the marketing sometimes and the placements and the can be very effective. But it's also very slow. It's just mm -hmm. I think it takes so much time to get all of that organized. People don't always realize what goes into it. But yeah. I suppose they could move a little faster, <laughs> but the the thing is, I don't think they've got incentive to do that because all the mm. other big publishers move equally as slow. So uh, I don't think yeah. <laughs> it's going to improve anytime soon. And another uh, thing on the on the time wise side of things, there, I've heard that uh, editing can take a long time, and even you when you get it back, it might be done very poorly. So uh, okay. there's not even necessarily that uh, the editing and the support that you get is going to be really that great. Mm. 
And yeah, again, I think it comes down to they, they don't really have anybody they have to compete against. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, within the publishing ecosystem, you can almost say it's not a free market. They, there's, there's no direct competition for stuff like editing and, <laughs> which feels so different to, you know, I, I look at this, I, I didn't know this, that the, the editing could be slow. Um, in my line of business, I, absolutely have to compete on speed as well as quality you you, you can't really sag on those things otherwise oh, you're just out of the game <laughs> and really uh, I imagine it's probably different for some authors like Stephen King but mm. their support might be where that push comes in they might receive the support where they get the editing back really quickly they get the next book out really quickly maybe mm. uh, whereas the ones the new authors who could become big sellers are given the lackluster third tier kind of support as it were yeah and just kind of pushed out and uh kind of see we see where it goes let it go on its own sort of thing yeah. it's a bit of a catch-22 isn't it yeah the, the the guys with the proven track records who don't need all the help they can get they get all the help and more, where the guys that could really use a boost to get the book really noticed, they kind of, you know, just suck it up, make yeah. it on your own. <laughs> that seems a bit self-defeating. Yeah. And uh, the last thing there, as far as cons that I was able to uh, come up with, um, and really in my mind this is a big thing, is uh, that you don't get to control the cover or the title and other things of that nature. So, like, you don't even get to really name your book, and that really seems kind of weird to me. Like, when I was looking up stuff about traditional publishing, and I saw that, and that just, it feels so odd. Like, I can't wrap my head around it almost, just even the title. Like, the cover I can see a little bit, because they want to do, like, something that's eye-catching, that sort of thing. They kind of know what they're doing a little bit there. But as far as your title, like, that's almost an artistic decision. So yeah, you you would think, <laughs> yeah. But then, uh, when the marketing department and the creative department clash, yeah, that doesn't turn out well for the author. Yeah. <laughs> and as far as us, uh, we have obviously gone to uh, self-publishing, and uh, there's definitely some pros to that in terms of uh, just control over things. So yeah. Why don't we go over that's, some of those pros? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's when you look at the pros for self-publishing, it's almost a point-by-point point, uh, you know, rejection of all the cons from legacy publishing, Yeah, which I think is kind of what was the driver behind the whole self-publishing movement coming on, you know, just emerging so strong uh, in the last, let's say, the last decade. Mm-hmm. Um, like you've got control over everything about the whole process with self-publishing. Your cover, your title, your price, uh, who you choose to edit your work, absolutely every part of the process you get to decide, you get to choose as the author, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, If, you know, I I should add the caveat that, you know, if that is your thing, because, uh, like we said in the pros for legacy publishing, some people might prefer just to do the writing and get it done with, push it out the door, forget about it. But I think most authors will want that control. It's, it's, it feels good to slap a title on something you've labored on. It feels very good to see that title out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, there's, there's the, the rejections thing. There's no gatekeepers. Uh, no one can reject you except your final reader. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and just uh, in terms of the rejection side of things, like Stephen King, uh, didn't he have to go through 18 different publishers or something like that before? Or 18 different uh, books? Or I can't remember exactly the number uh, of what it was. but I'm not sure. I, I know J.K. Rowling had a, like 19 rejections for Harry Potter before yeah. it finally released. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of those stories. <laughs> so many rejections. Um, so, yeah, if, you, if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to experience rejection, which is, you know, perfectly valid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, opinion 
to have, then you know, self-publishing is a very attractive option. Um, there's also no contracts, which is which is another nice thing. You you know you don't have to agree. You don't. Let's put it this way: you don't have to play by someone else's rules. Yeah. So you can agree to distribution contracts through, um, let's say, with Kindle. You do have some, like if you want to be on Kindle Unlimited. Um, you do have to agree to some things, which is fine, but you can perfectly choose which things you want to agree to or not, and it's perfectly up to you, which, you know, fantastic. For an independent author, uh, that's pretty much the holy grail. Yeah, control, like, at least on mind things, that's definitely one of the biggest things. Like, I like to have that control over it. Uh, definitely some things I wouldn't mind some help with, but... Like, I definitely like to have control over the title and the cover and kind mm, of the yeah. different parts of my book there. Like, I don't final like, says. Yeah, yeah. That's and uh, actually an extension of the no rejections is that uh, you also get to write what you want. Often your book in traditional publishing gets rejected based on you know we don't have, know how to market this. We don't know whether this will sell because you've written in a strange genre who mixes, you know, space cowboys with, <laughs> <laughs> you know, this kind of romance that you've got going on in this book. Um, with self-publishing, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can write in any genre. You can mix 10 different genres if you want. Uh, if you think there's a market for it, and, you know, common wisdom says there's pretty much a market for anything. <laughs> Then, you know, you're golden. Just go for it and see what you can come up with. It's, uh, I think it's very liberating and it's very, uh, creative, uh, yeah, free. Yeah, you just have to really find, find that niche, as it were, and then mm. market towards that. And <laughs> since it's just you, uh, in general, you just have to worry about your own bills to pay, as it yeah. were, after that. And, if you can find that niche, and you know, if it's uh, if it's a really good book, even in that niche, you'd be able to probably make uh, enough so that you can live off of it at least, hopefully. Yeah. And and the nice thing about this is, in contrast to the legacy publishing ecosystem, uh, this is perfectly a free market. So when you write something that people don't want, you will know that because your sales will suck. And then you will decide <laughs> next time, let's do something different. And we try something else until you find the thing that works for you. Mm -hmm. You know, until you connect with the audience that's freaky in exactly the same way you are. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's it's all about control, I think. Mm -hmm. the, you know, you control everything, the cover, the title, the, who edits it, what the schedule is like. You know, when you decide when you're ready with the book, or when you're not. Yeah. And you don't have to wait eighteen you... months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You when when you do wait, you do it exactly for the reasons that you know why you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I need to wait because I still want to do one more pass to fix you know, character reactions. I don't think they're uh, you know, good enough yet, or whatever it is you wanna do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the pros. I think you can boil them all down to just control. Yeah. And I think that's that's a good thing. But yeah, there's definitely not to say though that there aren't uh, aren't any cons. There for sure are, yeah. and uh, it depends uh, again on your disposition whether or not these uh, would be more negative than the traditional publishing side. Uh, but mm -hmm. of course, the first and probably the biggest one is uh, that it's very hard to get discovered. We were kind of saying it before there. You really have to find your niche and uh, kind of sometimes, like there's definitely exceptions, but sometimes you'll have to settle with the fact that uh, you're not going to be a big best-selling author. Like making a living is probably the biggest achievement that you can make, uh, as it were. But mm -hmm. uh uh, on the other side of things with the traditional publishing there might even be uh, just a little bit a little bit more of uh, ease to becoming a bestseller like maybe that's just my own perception on it and warped perception after so many years <laughs> of the traditional publishing uh, dogma as it were 
but it just mm. almost feels like that and so that's definitely a big uh, big thing for a, a con on the self-publishing yeah. side yeah i definitely think there's there's a bit of a it's 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 just slightly more difficult i think you lose some of the help that you you would have gotten in getting discovered with self publishing you 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 give up some of that you know that leg up that you might have gotten um mm-hmm. if you know if one editor noticed you on the other hand given how the slush piles work at big publishers it, it it's just as hard actually to get discovered in the slush pile at the big big publishing house. Yeah. Um. There there are so many stories of people who, you know, their uh, manuscripts just languish there for years, uh, and never get picked up, and they get, you know, you have these assistants that go through it, um, that n- might not necessarily know what exactly they're looking for, but they, you know, so. It's something to keep in mind that once you do get published, yes, it's easier in the legacy publishing route for discoverability, but there's this added layer of the slush pile that kind of... <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just luck all around. <laughs> yeah, luck, I, luck um, is a huge part. Yeah. Like uh, we've mentioned several times before there, the Martian. <laughs> ah, of course. Kind of got lucky there, and there's uh, definitely some other examples uh, on the self-publishing end, and uh, I'm sure that on the other end as well, on the traditional publishing. But that's the thing, you know, ju- I'm just thinking about that now. Nobody ever says that uh, they're lucky when they got traditionally published and they make it big. At least yeah, from what I'm It's all about merit, and uh, <laughs> you must, you know, just bow down and... <laughs> bask in the glory but it, I think definitely luck yeah. so it's a big thing that people don't attribute enough to mm-hmm. and uh, moving on there another uh, con for the self-publishing side of things uh, I'll combine a couple here but uh, mm-hmm. there's a big barrier to entry uh, and there's a lot of research that you have to go through, like as far as how to set it up, keywords, and how to make a file. And uh, if you want it to actually go far, you do have to put in a lot of money sometimes. That's also a, a little bit of a barrier, barrier to entry as well, like getting those editors and cover creators and the marketing and uh, just that research side of things. Like there's a lot to handle. Uh, and there's not really uh, much of a definitive training manual on how to do it. Like, you know, you have the uh, How to Self-Publish Your Dummies book there. But that's probably a little outdated at this point, I think. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no definitive training manual, except there is one, and we call it Google. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it does take a lot of work. It's not laid out for you yeah. in a nice, easy-to-digest uh, format. But if you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to really go at this, then well, Google is your friend. Yeah. And Second Drafts is your friend. We also uh, are oh, trying, our, trying our hand at that as well. <laughs> Naturally, yeah. We're going to be... Uh, giving a lot of hints and tips and uh, tutorials yep. on second drafts. <laughs> so we really hope to help people with this one. And uh, one thing, just uh, hearkening back to that editing side of things, I mean, even on Iron of Things, of course, we have to deal with people who uh, don't do a proper edit or do a bad cover and that sort of thing. And trial and error is definitely going to be a natural mm-hmm. part of uh, self-publishing and you need to get uh, good people on your team as it were to kind of help you out yeah and yeah it's very important to have a strong support network when mm-hmm. you decided you want to do the self-publishing thing because as we mentioned you're not going to have that fantastic support that you sometimes get from the legacy publishers so you just have to do it yourself which is the whole spirit of self-publishing of course <laughs> yeah so you can, yeah, do it yourself because uh, no one else is going to. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so then we move on to this third category of uh, of publishing that uh, is called vanity publishing. Now, I'm sure a lot of you already know more or less what this is, but uh, just for those who don't, we're going to try to define it here. It's kind of like a hybrid publishing between the previous two types. You know, you it's a it's a way for you to pay someone to to self publish you if that makes any sense which to some people it doesn't make sense it, it <laughs> seems a bit <laughs> counterintuitive um which i think is part of the problem i think with vanity publishing that people experience with it mm-hmm. um they definitely have a couple of there's there's some advantages um it's it is they have some of the reach of the traditional publishers they can typically get your book on bookshelves mm-hmm. uh, they can organize things may some marketing things like book signing tours and uh, they do bundle together a lot of services like uh, cover creation editing um, they you'll notice they always offer these in bundles that are that seem optional many times you know you can take this or you don't need to they they really do try to present themselves as giving you a lot of choice so they try to maintain a lot of the uh, advantages of self publishing yeah but, like almost seemingly like you have a little bit of control over it mm, they 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 do try that but as we've mentioned before uh, we we have discussed this in a previous episode uh yeah, there are I some, universe for some me significant. <laughs> what was it for you yeah. there? What was it called? Uh, I forget. Trafford. Trafford. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With those ones, it, it feels like it's really pay to win. Like you have to uh, get the packages that have like those top tier ones with the reviews and the uh, the possible editorial uh, reviews and stars and mm-hmm. stuff like that, whatever they want to call them. Uh, just basically feels like uh, it's really overpriced and stuff that you don't mm. really need, but they make it seem like you really need it or that you kind of want it to make it big, as it were. Mm. But uh, like kind of as we were saying before in one of our previous episodes, like they don't really have good customer service or support, and the customer service that they do give. Uh, just seems to try and reinforce the fact that this is the way to go sort of thing. And like, if you don't, then you're not going to get anywhere. And Mm. whereas with, at least with self publishing, you have a little bit of control over some of the things so that if something is not working, then you can do something different. Yeah. Yeah. You have ultimate control. In fact, (laughs) yeah. And uh, with vanity publishing, Unfortunately, there's not really much to say about it. We don't really agree with that model very much. Uh, yeah. The pay-to-win sort of thing. Mm. Look, if uh, let me put it this way. If, if you have more money, then you have aversion to people overcharging you for services, then this might be for you. Mm-hmm. If, 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 if you feel okay with throwing a lot of money at the problem and hoping for the best and possibly getting a, you know, a, an okay deal out of it, then this may actually be for you. Um, we, we can't say in general that this is absolutely wrong for everybody in every situation. Uh, we just, I personally think you just need to be very careful. You need to look at exactly what are you getting. Mm-hmm. For what you for what you're paying, and that's very important. And you know, just be aware of what you'll typically get and read reviews. Of course, yeah. <laughs> that's the nice thing about the web. You can find reviews about just just about anything. So it's good to poll other people that have experience with this, and you know, understand what what it is that you're letting yourself in for. Yeah, I mean, uh, when it comes to traditional publishing, vanity publishing, or even self-publishing, there definitely like look online, uh, ask other people who have done it themselves, and see kind of what they feel and what they think about uh, how the route that they've gone. 
Uh, mm. For myself personally, I definitely feel that uh, I've done it the right way with the self-publishing side of things. I mean, mm. I definitely would appreciate a little bit more of that support as well, though, like uh, on the traditional publishing side of things. But, you know, I'm, we're kind of starting that thing. We're kind of building up a team. Like I have you there as my editor. <laughs> I have another guy who uh, does my covers, and I'm pretty much exclusive with him because he's done yeah. such a good job there. And oh, no, yeah, your covers are gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Yours too. Don't sell yourself short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, just kind of building up that uh, that network of teams, as it were, and hmm. just getting that all set up so that you can kind of uh, get a little bit of weight off your shoulders. Hmm. But uh, definitely, we're uh, we're not perfect, and we're not uh, always going to be uh, right there. So, audience, why don't you tell us uh, what you think of each option there, and uh, what you would prefer to do? Yeah, and tell us if we've missed anything. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, once again, thank you for joining us here at Second Drafts Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in future podcasts. See you next time. Cool. Cheers, guys. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.